Hi folks, welcome back. So we just wanted to share with you um, how we got on yesterday um, and sort of pick up where we left off, which was us leaving our cabin yesterday morning um, to head into Amsterdam for the day. So we were allowed off, I think after about 10, 10 or around 10 a.m. Um, there was the call over the PA system and then basically we had to go through passport control and then get onto our bus. That whole process took about 40 minutes from the moment we got off the ship until that bus left. Mm -hmm. Passport control was really slow and then there was an issue with the bus, there was like an extra passenger or something so it was hanging around for some reason and it didn't leave for another uh, 20 minutes after we got on it. So yeah, 40 minutes, which wasn't great. Um, yeah. Yeah, it just sort of seemed like a lot of waiting about. The bus was full and unfortunately I think they had oversold the bus, but you know they weren't going to be able to create extra seats in the no. bus, so we should have just went on and then somebody should have arranged alternative transport for the, the family that were going to be left behind. Um, but yeah, you'll get the bus straight out at the uh, terminal building. Um, you can't miss it, it's quite a sort of small car park area. And yesterday there was three buses in total. There was two that were going into the city centre, and then there was one doing an excursion to the zoo. And obviously to get on your bus you need to show your booking confirmation that has the bus transfer on it. Yeah. Um, then the transfer yeah. itself into Amsterdam took around 40 minutes and that left us off um, about five minutes away from Central Station um, at a big um, complex where buses just seemed to park and it was right next to the river where all the river cruise boats um, uh, parked up along the, the riverside as well. Which sort of kind of put us in the mid, mid night to start looking at river cruises because um, you actually see how close they get into the, the city centres. Um, so yeah, so we decided then that we, well we had no plans in terms of what we wanted to do for our, uh, our morning in Amsterdam. Um, both of us had never been to the place before so we had a walk uh, around um, and we came across this little kiosk um, and we bought tickets then for a canal cruise that lasted approximately uh, one hour. Um, there are loads of different canal cruises that you can pick from. Um, literally we went to the first kiosk which sold um, tickets for that. The city sightseeing buses with the red top, uh, open top buses, the hop on hop off. And there's also one of those, um, that company also does like a, a, river, a canal cruise as well. Um, but the one we picked was uh, by a company called Lovers. Um, you don't have to be feeling romantic just to go on this canal cruise. Um, but um, so yeah, so we made our way then from that little kiosk. It was about a five minute walk to the pier where you met your um, your boat. So the cruise itself, like I say, was an hour. Um, it cost us um, 16, 16 euro. 16 euro, yeah, each. Yeah. And um, it was fine, it was really comfortable and it was beautiful to sort of uh, go around the different canals and there was um, audio on our little headphones. Yeah, I think it was in 15 different, 15 or 17 different languages from what I can remember. Um, and um, yeah, it was great learning just about different bits and pieces about what the buildings were and things like that and uh, certainly the areas that it took us around were um, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I took away from it was that the all the riverside um, houses are now basically owned by banks or did they say uh, a lot of them because ones, they're too yeah. hard to upkeep because they used to be um, storage facilities for the likes of getting your um, haulage and stocks and whatever off the ships because they all had like a little um, beam with a hook that they would have used to pull the, the stocks yeah and they're just at the expense in that and we saw lots of um, houseboats as well oh, and yes. they're talking about a lot of people and uh, now on these houseboats which literally have electric running water gas and everything and, and proper sewage systems yeah. and things so um but uh, so that was kind of cool to see as well and there's a lot of those about so mm -hmm. quite a lot of people living on the canals here although the only thing that happened halfway through it rained so then i really couldn't get any footage the camera was just like focusing on the rain mm -hmm. and i was thinking ah <laughs> Um, so yeah, after the cruise we literally took a little dander and we stopped at a cafe um, for lunch. Um, I didn't have breakfast so I was hungry mm -hmm. um, so we had called in to a little um, cafe and lunch wasn't overly really pricey but the cafe we did go into only accepted cash. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. And we were kind of like, oops. Um, so 
uh, very kindly though that the lady told you where the nearest ATM was so yeah. you can make a quick dash um, to go and get cash then but uh, yeah we had a lovely lunch and uh, and it just it was set us up then for our stroll mm-hmm. yeah so we went um, just we sort of tried to go back the way that the the canal cruises went just to see some of the canals and they really are they're really beautiful and the other thing that struck me was the amount of bikes mm. <laughs> that were just like lying in the streets and and then obviously there's bridges and bridges and bridges and bridges yeah. and all these houses and uh, yeah. Really I know nice. I sort of thought whenever you saw like postcards of Amsterdam and things and you saw bicycles chained up that was literally something that was maybe just set there but you know uh, for the sake of the picture but yeah there was a lot of people uh, cycling around the, the city so yeah. uh, clearly um, they're all into their cycling. Which... And, and all the streets that lined the canals were very similar looking like if you walk through one or walk past one you might think oh have I seen this before it's all just look the same mm-hmm. um, which was quite unusual I don't think I've ever experienced that before so. Um, so we then made a quick stop um, just for a cup of coffee and we actually went we, we stumbled across a Dunkin Donuts mm-hmm. uh, so we literally was like oh great let's head on for coffee and donuts so um, we made a quick dash into there um, just to uh, get a cup of and then we again just carried on just mooching around and just walking around and um, we then started to go into a few of the, the shops that we were passing and looked at some souvenirs um, I collect rubber ducks, um, so I do, and uh, there's a whole shop full of rubber ducks. Uh, so yeah, we had to go in there. I was in my element, and um, uh, yeah, and we just we just sort of stopped at different little shops on the way back. Mm-hmm. We sort of knew the sort of direction that we had to walk in to head back to the um, the pickup yeah. point. So we just sort of stopped along our way. On the way back um, to the coach as well, it was it rained mm-hmm. like on and off for a good, what, like nearly 30 minutes. Mm. So, um, yeah, we headed back then to the coach pickup point. Um, luckily, we didn't have too long to wait. The coaches were there. So the coaches then picking up on the way back. Um, they leave between sort of 3, 30, 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, they obviously know how many people should be on the coaches. So they're normally, they're, they were both there um, at around quarter past three whenever we arrived back. Um, so if you think about when the coach arrived, um, that was around... 20 past 11 mm-hmm. and we had to leave at half three, half three. three. So just over four so hours so you just have over four hours it's not the most amount of time but it's it, it was perfect it was for enough. us because yeah, we, we had enough. nothing planned and um, certainly we said that if we would go back and um, we would um we would certainly have other things planned there's different museums there's the ice bar and things like that as well that you could go to and um, so i think next time we would be sort of better planned and decide yes now we know what Amsterdam has to offer mm-hmm. and we sort of know the area a little bit better, little better we know yeah. how we could walk to these places and we definitely um, would come back and, and we book some of those um, sites to go and see. So yes, so again whenever you're getting back onto the bus you need to obviously show your um, your booking confirmation because it will say on it that you've actually paid for your bus ticket. Yeah. And then you come back doing the 40 minute return journey then back to the terminal building. If you're on the mini cruise, don't queue up at the check-in. Literally just walk straight past straight. that queue and head towards passport, passport control. control yeah. They'll stamp your passports again. And then as you go through passport control, there is a customer service representative from DFPS and they basically scan your little boarding card and then tell you to go on ahead onto the ship. So after we relaxed in our cabin for about an hour, we made our way back up to the um, Explorer's Kitchen. Explorer's Kitchen, yeah, for our dinner. And something to note about the buffet menu options is it's the same every evening. So what was there the first night was exactly the same last night. And again, the food options were really good. Um, I tried to get something different again. Can't even remember what I had. You actually had the cottage pie last night. Oh, I had the cottage pie and I had the pork. Yeah. Yeah. It was really I, I had a roast pork dinner, um, and I had salad to start, and then it was pork dinner, and uh, yeah, it was really really nice. Mm-hmm. So it was. Um, like I said, there is plenty to choose from. I think. Um, because we're you know because because we really only had like a one sort of proper dinner. As such, even the night before, we weren't sort of taken from every station. It kind of meant was that there was still plenty of things for us to choose from, you know, whenever we were back last night. So just to mention, there is another restaurant on board, um, which is called Bistro North Sea. 
it is like a set menu, an a la carte restaurant with a set sort of three course menu. Um, whenever you're booking, if you're booking online, there are sample menus on the website. Um, so whenever we made this booking, we did sort of check that out and we sort of felt that the, the buffet option would be more uh, better suited for us uh, and our tastes. But um, yeah, it, it seemed quite busy too whenever we had passed it. Yeah, and then just in terms of other um, bar options, there is the Compass Bar, which we didn't actually, I went up just um, to have an explore around the different decks and visit places I hadn't been to before. And there's the Compass Bar and it seemed quite quiet. It seems more like a whiskey bar. Well, that's certainly how it's themed. And then next to that is the Coffee Crew. Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yeah, and um, then they serve Starbucks coffee and obviously snacks that you would normally get in Starbucks. And then next to that, there's a children's play area. And obviously I didn't take any footage for obvious reasons. Yeah, it's a soft sort of play area. And as well as that, we have noticed that there are um, two sort of like kids kind of, like kids sort of club staff. Um, yeah. They're sort of walking around sort of really dressed in like little pirate costumes. Um, and um, last night on our way back to the cabin, we noticed one of them was doing like a treasure hunt and uh, in the mornings you'll hear over the public address system that who won the the, the treasure hunt and the colouring competition so the drawing um, competition or whatever <laughs> yeah so they do a drawing competition the colouring competition and then they do the treasure hunt uh, for the kids that are on board other facilities on the ship also include the there's a dog hotel most likely it's just dog kennels and then there's a dog um area where you can take your dog to relieve itself um, and on deck eight there's also um, two cinemas and there is three showings per cinema each day yep and um, basically um, on deck six um, near reception and um, there is a screen that will tell you uh, what the three showings are and the times um, I think from memory it was about eight euro uh, per ticket and they did some sort of a deal which I think was about 12, 12 and a half euro basically um, which was for uh, to include like drinking a popcorn as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, after our meal, um, like I said, we did uh, have a walk about the ship just sort of seeing what other facilities there were. Um, we then decided that we were going to hit the shops again because we saw a few items the night before and we thought, yeah, we're definitely going back to buy those um, and uh, make use of the, the good savings uh, on duty free. Um, and uh, so, yes, we went shopping back to the shops and had another uh, peruse and, and bought a few items. And, um, and then actually we made our way back to the cabin. We bought some drinks and just brought them back with us. We did sleep better, however, last night. The room yeah, was still definitely really warm. Slept better, yeah. The room was still definitely very warm, but um, we, we did sleep better. I think just uh, everything had caught up with us, so we were, you know, we were definitely going to be able to sleep, I think, last night. Um, and then we were up early this morning for breakfast, back up to Explorer's um, Kitchen. And it is worthwhile just sort of saying, folks, that in the mornings, um, the the shops open again, and so does the coffee um, crew. Yeah, the shops open from 8 a.m. Yeah. Until it docks, basically. Yeah. Uh, and, and same with the, the coffee shop as well. So you, you will find some people aren't going in for the breakfast, but they're maybe just sort of stopping off in the Starbucks uh, cafe just for coffee and an often or something like that. So... Um, but we went back in for breakfast. Uh, this was my first time trying breakfast. I was really surprised by the amount of food that there was available, um, and it was really tasty. Mm -hmm. So it was. It was. Um, there was plenty of options. Um, I we both had a bit of a cooked breakfast this morning, actually. Um, but it, it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. The breakfast is really good. So, folks, we've now come to the end of our two night mini cruise. Um, to Amsterdam from Newcastle, D uh, DFDS Ferries, uh, on board uh, Princess Seaways. So we wanted basically to go through our final thoughts and our views about what we felt about this experience and obviously share with you whether we'd actually do it again. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we just wanted to quickly talk about our cabin. I know we've mentioned some of this before, but um, the some of the good, the good points we found about it was that we liked the fact that there was 
uh, okay, there's maybe say three different lights in the cabin, but they were each controlled by different switches. So you didn't have to have all lights on or all lights off. And obviously, um, and then each bed each has bed. a lamp. Yeah, bedside, which is sort of um, basic. But I mean, it's it's, it's good nice if you're you know, it's good it, if yeah. you're in bed and you're reading or something mm -hmm. like that. Now bear in mind, folks, that we uh, only booked this um, mini cruise at last minute, so we were limited in the the options in terms of what uh, cabins we could pick from. And um, we did, um, we, we had to go for, I think it's what's called like a economy so, or standard co uh, it's cabin. A, it's a two bed, sea view cabin, bunk beds. Yeah. So, uh, and basically our cabin, um, like I say, is on deck four. And um, the other good point about it was in terms of the storage, you know, little space under the seat um, yeah. and under the beds and under the desks. So yes, you don't have a lot of space to hang up clothes and put away clothes, but you're only here for a night or two nights, depending on if you're, if you're doing the actual mini cruise. So we find that, um, that we had ample room just to store bags under uh, those places. In terms of the not so good um, about the cabin, there's no TV in this cabin, but there was a radio from the Stone Age, <laughs> but, um, but it was actually liked. really nice just having it to fill in that little bit of background noise, wasn't yeah. it? Um, like if we were just chilling out here for half an hour so we just put the radio on. Yeah, really enjoyed that actually. Mm -hmm. The cabin is small. Yeah. So we measured it last night and it's coming in just under seven meters squared, yeah. which includes obviously your living area and um, your bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, so like this way, the the width of it is only like two meters. Mm -hmm. And then from the window to the door is around three and a half meters, which makes the seven yeah. meters squared. It, it is tight for it two adults. Tight, yeah. yeah. Uh, it is tight for two adults, um, especially uh, to the size, mm. height and width. Um, but uh, yeah, the beds obviously weren't the most comfiest. Um, I think with that and the heat in the room, we didn't really have sort of two good nights sleep, no. but we got one. But the beds aren't really that comfortable. Um, and then if, another thing for me to try and get up onto this bed the ladder is quite narrow and then because of the height between this bed and the ceiling and I'm obviously a tall person it's hard to get to the top of the ladder and then, like you have to curl yourself in throw yourself under the bed yeah so that wasn't great so it sort of put me off even getting onto the bed so I sort of tried to delay that as much as possible until I'm actually going to go to sleep so yeah and I think just remember that this cabinet is for two adults it's not as if it's for like that's true, one yeah. adult and one kid and child, yeah. um, you know that it should only be the kid in the bunk so um, yeah in terms of plug sockets then plug sockets we only have one uh, EU socket in the cabin so uh, we obviously have a little charger that has two um, spaces in it and um, so we were strategically uh, using the cha uh, going on charge so we would advise if you're doing this uh, to bring a battery pack um, with you which we always do and we have it always fully charged so in terms of the bathroom then um, the bathroom is a good size mm -hmm. there's plenty of space to move around uh, you know the, the sink and the toilet mm -hmm. um, however as we mentioned earlier in our video the toilet nearly is sitting in the shower area so it's impossible to not get the entire bathroom floor wet mm. whenever you're getting a shower. Even if you really push the curtain open and stick it against the wall while it's wet, it's still, still goes yeah, all over and the again, floor, don't forget the, floor the, for the, some reason. The, the, the ship moves as well. So like you were saying yesterday morning, uh, you know, um, the water had ran from one side to the other. Yeah. But the shower itself is actually quite powerful and the temperature was quite consistent, which was really good. I, I mean, I found the shower great. Yeah, no, it was it was great. Then the other not so good thing was the placement of the tile hooks. They were placed right above where the toilet roll um, dispenser was, which is just bizarre. There's space on the door, but there is no hooks or they could have just moved them up because of the way that tile felt nearly like went around the toilet roll. So it was just bizarre. I don't know why they placed them there. So thinking about uh, our food, uh, we've had two great meals in Explorers Kitchen in the evenings and also back there uh, for breakfast. And again, 
all the meals have been uh, really good, uh, really good options and availability of the food. Um, they were never seemed to be running out of anything up there. No, they, they never ran out of anything actually. Yeah. No. And um, and then as well as that, obviously there is the the coffee crew uh, venue where you can stop and get your Starbucks, and there's a little public seating area up there, and you'll find people just sitting up there reading and uh, and looking out to see. Um, so the yeah. other thing I sorry just to interrupt, uh, I really liked about Explorers Kitchen was that you were assigned that table, which meant you felt like you know you could get up and no one's going to take the table. The waiters kept an eye on your table, plus. If you bought a drink, then they sort of weren't going to clear that table until you would paid your bill for those drinks, which sort of was better than other buffets we've had. I think I probably would. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I would. I definitely would do it again. However, I would book in advance and I would make sure that I booked a cabin that I know I would want. Yeah. So there are cabins that have either two single beds, which are bigger, there are two there are cabins that have a double bed or there are sort of um more premium cabins uh, called commodore uh, rooms and suites so i think i probably would want a cabin that i knew was going to be bigger in size and had more sort of space that you didn't feel as claustrophobic and i definitely couldn't do a bunk bed again um i think as well like i say um the other thing you have to remember is, in terms of the, the price comparison, we're obviously used to doing cruises and cruise lines. Um, I don't know whether this was great value for money. No. Um, so what we did was, um, we have counted up now how much we spent uh, on the mini cruise, our breakfasts, our meals uh, at night time and our, our bus tickets uh, back and forward into Amsterdam. So basically, for the two nights, then we spent a, a total of four hundred and nineteen pound, which isn't a great deal of money. Um, you know, for for two nights, basically half board accommodation, and we've got to travel and see somewhere different. Um, so we don't think it's bad value for money. We've done a price comparison uh, compared to um, a, a cruise line uh, doing a four night cruise to Amsterdam, um, which obviously would uh, include more food because you know food served nearly all day on a cruise line um and uh, there would be more entertainment so that came out for a four night cruise in an ocean view cabin at 798 pounds for the two of us um, i do think that probably makes the cruise ship more of a better deal because you sort of be getting more buying for your buck, as the saying is, basically, um, you know, even if it was sort of double the price. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we would, we, we've had a great time, uh, and I think we would definitely do it again. Yeah, I would say for me, everything but the cabin was above my expectation. Yeah. Like, the entertainment was quite good that one night in the Columbus Club. Mm -hmm. the, food, the food's been excellent in um, Explorer's Kitchen. And we've found some great days in the shops, which you don't yeah. really get on a cruise line that often. Well, we can't seem to get them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just really the cabin has let it down. I think we would have come away from this with a completely different sort of... Um, yeah, different view. Different if, view, if, yeah. yeah. If we had a better cabin. If we had a better cabin, yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, if we're looking at value compared to a cruise line, mm. if we got a better cabin on this ferry, it would again push the price up, so therefore yeah. again it might not be good as value. So, the question that we asked at the beginning was, can you cruise on a ferry? Yeah, but it, it, the experience is different. Yeah. They, the <laughs> DFDS has done a great job at trying to make the mini cruise feel like a cruise because of the entertainment on board, um, but obviously it's, it's still different, so it is, but uh, again, uh, it's been a great uh, two days, two nights, and uh, we'll definitely return to the FDS ferries. Um, but we'll make sure we pick the, the book a cabin that we definitely won't know we want and we'll like. So, folks, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to our channel. It's free. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be alerted the next time we post a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.